free handling snakes. You want to see me free handling snake? It's coming up. free handling dangerous snakes. Now I'm a trained professional and I've been doing this for 35 years. And just because you see me do these kind of things, please don't try this at home. I am licensed and I'm a trained professional. Please don't try this at home. Gotcha, didn't I? Okay guys, free handling venomous. It's a hot topic right now and because there's been a lot of social media stuff with guys doing it and it's it's just blown up. And I'm gonna tell you, it's 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 really a, a stickler with me <laughs> because I I don't see any reason whatsoever to free handle a venomous snake. There's just no reason in the world to do that. They're not pets, they're not puppies, they're not kittens. You, there's no reason to do it. But, you know, as an educator, um, some of these guys that are on social media doing it, you know, y'all need to be aware that, you know, you're the face of this community. And I don't care about your disclaimers on your websites, on your TV shows, on your YouTube videos, claiming that you're, you know, the professional, don't try this at home. There are impressionable minds out there, youngsters watching you, and you are the face of that. And they're seeing you do it. And eventually someone's going to try it and then tragedy is going to strike <laughs> because honestly to you guys that are watching these videos and you're thinking well I'm a keeper I'm gonna start working with my snakes and I'm gonna tame them and get them to where I can free handle them you don't tame a venomous snake it's conditioning you can condition a snake to tolerate what you're gonna do with him you don't tame them there's no such thing they're just tolerating us and even a ball python will bite you. Sooner or later, they're going to bite you. It's just, it, they're running on natural instinct. Lobbyists, the politicians, all the stuff that's going on with the exotics community, all they got to do is pull up a YouTube video, pull up a TV show with guys free handling big cobras and gaboons and rattlesnakes and go, this is why we need to make this illegal. I see it coming and it's going to ruin the hobby for everybody. You know, I don't believe in taking anybody's liberties away. If you want to free handle your snake, do it in the privacy of your own home, not on camera. Don't do it for clicks, for views, for, for whatever the reason. I believe everybody should be able to do what they want to do. I mean, I don't want no one telling me that I can't ride my motorcycle or I can't own a gun or I can't keep my snakes and I can't do what I do to make money. But when you're doing it and you're blasting it out there to hundreds of thousands of people, it's your duty as an educator to show them the safe way to do it because there's too many impressionable children out there to watch that stuff and sooner or later they're going to try it and that's just a fact. You know, they're defending themselves saying, well, we're showing that these animals are not uh, the scary creatures that everybody, you know, says that they are and, and we're showing just how they can be tamed and it's really not that dangerous. That's, that's bullshit. I mean, you know it, I know it, and I'm going to tell you, I mean, it's a numbers game. It's literally a numbers game. I mean, going back to, like, Grace Olive Wiley, she was one of the first greats when it came to animal behavior and, and free handling snakes. And she'd done it all over the country in shows and everything. And what happened to Grace? She got bit by her Indian cobra during a photo shoot, a snake she handled thousands of times, it bit her and it killed her. It took 90 minutes and it took Grace's life. And she was a pretty esteemed herpetologist and she was a smart lady, but she thought in her mind that she can tame them snakes. She thought she was taming them snakes. You're not taming them. You're conditioning them to tolerate that behavior. And 
when you see these guys doing this kind of behavior, they're not snake whisperers. They're, that's, that's ridiculous. Snake salvation, I think, or something where, 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 you know, it's these guys' religion through Appalachia to free handle, take up serpents, venomous snakes. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that most of them boys are dead now by snake bite. And it's, it's sad. And they died doing what they believed in. I mean, it's their religion. That's what ingrained in them. They believe that. But most of them are, they're perished because of a snake bite. And they refused antivenom. They refused medical care. And, they, and it's sad, but they died. And it's, it's just a numbers game. And them guys are tossing snakes around, and they do it every Sunday. And probably done it for 20 years till pow. That one day, something wasn't right. That snake wasn't right. Something was off, and the snake decided he's going to bite you. So there's no reason to do it. I mean, but, and as an educator, you owe it to the audience not to do reckless behavior. It's just, it's, I wish people would see that. Because sooner or later, the exotics will be banned in the USA. It will be gone. It's, it's, the, we're one of the few countries where we can do what we want. And when the lobbyists and the politicians get their hands on these videos, and when they really do a big push to ban exotics on a federal level, on a national level, that's all they need. There's the ammunition. This is why they need to be banned. Because we gave them a chance, and look what they do with them. They free handle them, they play with them like they're pets, and they get bit, and they get a $500,000 bill that never gets paid. Antivenom isn't available. The few facilities that have it, they have it for their own protection. So the US of A is not paying for antivenom, that's for sure. <laughs> so that's my thoughts on free handling. That's all I got to say about it. But, you know, I'm going to pull a kaboon out and show you how. This snake can probably be free handled, okay? But I would never take that liberty. It's a calm snake. It might huff and puff a little bit, but one thing goes wrong. I try to make my snakes feel comfortable with me. You try to make them feel comfortable. Don't let them view you as a threat. That's step number one. Step number two is you got to protect yourself. Step number three is you protect. Protect the animal. Protect the snake itself from not injuring itself or injuring you or, or hurting itself. So the way I handle snakes is the way I've been doing this for 35 years, and I've never suffered a bite because I follow my protocols. Okay, see, now this is not classified as free handling. I do have a hand on this snake to support it. I'm using my very big flat hook to support his weight. It's a pretty good sized gaboon. It's not a monster, but he's getting there. But free handling, I'd have to get rid of this hook and use both hands and replace this hook with my hand. And that's putting my hand way too close to the danger zone, okay? And this snake can be conditioned to free handle him, okay? I'm not bouncing him around. He doesn't view me as a threat, so and his behavior is going to reflect on my behavior, okay? He's very calm. I'm very calm. So this snake would be a good candidate to be free handled. I mean, I don't think that this snake would bite me. But what I think and what will happen are two different things. Now, see, we're going to let him just sit down nice and comfortable there, readjust, and use our hook to support him. The guys that you see free handling these things, they're not snake whispers. They've just done this over and over again with the same animal, and they've got that animal condition where that animal feels, okay, this isn't a threat to me, so I'm not going to bite him. But it's a numbers game. Sooner or later, something's going to trigger the instinct in that snake to bite you. Just like driving and texting, okay? You've done it a million times, and what happens? All of a sudden, bam, you're in a car wreck. Because it's a numbers game. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. Tragedy's going to strike. Even as a keeper and a breeder like I am, I run a chance of getting bit every day. I keep anti-venom for everything that I keep, everything that I breed, but there is never a 100% guarantee. And I've been doing this 35 years, and I've never suffered a bite. But let me tell you, 
This is a safe, proper way to handle a venomous snake. The hook keeps him pushed away from me far enough where he can't reach me if he does do a backward strike, if he does one of his crazy gaboon strikes. You know, I'm at a safe distance there where he can't hurt me. But if I replace this hook with my hand, that's a whole different ball game, okay? That's putting my hand and my arm in the danger zone. And just because this snake isn't huffing and puffing, it's because I've hooked him and moved him around like this hundreds of times. He feels comfortable. And me keeping him in that nice, comfortable state keeps this animal in that nice, comfortable state. But bouncing around with him, letting him feel that, okay, maybe this big thing is a threat to me. That's going to change his whole demeanor, okay? Here I'm starting to huff and puff because I'm waving my arms around. You know, what you got to understand is for every action, there's a reaction. And it's the same thing. I'm going to just kind of squat down here with him just so I ain't got him hanging there. For every action, there's a reaction. So what's going to happen is if I make the wrong move and it just sets this guy into a defensive posture, he's going to want to bite me, okay? And sooner or later, free handling, it's going to happen. You're going to get bit. I don't care who you are, how long you've been doing it. If you've been doing this 20 years, if you've been doing it 50 years. If you're taking them liberties, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to get tagged sooner or later. See, now, just because he's trying to move and I'm restricting him from moving, he's getting a little bit grumpy. But it just goes to show you that you can condition him so you can handle him, but that still does not mean that he's tame and you can do it all the time. And some snakes, you can't even... You can't even get this far with them. It's impossible. I've got a gaboon that you can't even hook. you got to use two hooks to move him around because he is a monster. And he's huffing and puffing and striking, and there's just no way that you can do it. This one, I've done it enough. I can move him around gently, and he's cool with it because he's been conditioned. He's been handled a bunch of times, okay? I'm not a snake whisperer, <laughs> and the snake isn't tame. He's just tolerating me. He is tolerating this behavior. That's what's going on here. When you see these guys free handling these big gaboons, they're not snake whispers. The snake's just tolerating them. And that's the truth of the matter. I'm going to put him back, y'all. Hey, you guys. So just my thoughts on free handling and what I think that it's going to lead to and what I believe. You know, I'm not going to name names and browbeat other people and thing. I, that, that's not what this is about. This is just about, I mean, you guys asked me. You know, I've had a bunch of people ask me on my thoughts on it, and that's my thoughts on it. And that's just what I believe. And I said, I've been doing this 35 years, and that's, that's just the way I see things. And other people may see it differently, and I don't hold it against you if you see it differently. I would just like to see our community show a little more responsibility for their content. I mean, because ultimately, it's going to turn into an issue. And that's an issue we don't want to see arise. But don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share, and come on back to Venom Central. we got a lot more coming at you. This is Willie checking out. Later.